So if they're doing high intensity training, uh, doing strength stuff, and they're doing high intensity interval training on swim, bike, run, it's really magic for their whole physiology and, and preventing injuries. Welcome to the Spartan Endurance Series on Spartan Up Podcast with host Johnny Waite. Hey everybody, we've got a big name for you today. If you follow triathlon at all, you know the name Dave Scott, six-time Ironman world champion. He was just known as the man, synonymous with Kona. This guy is an absolute legend, and we have him here today talking to us about the importance of stretching, mobility, and strength in endurance sports, something that's overlooked by most athletes, and he's going to tell you why you do not want to miss this. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by the Exogen Ultrasound Bone Healing System. If you or a loved one has a broken bone, talk to your doctor about Exogen. Exogen is indicated for the healing of non-union fractures and for accelerating the healing of certain acute fractures with no contraindications. To learn more, visit exogen.com, E-X-O-G-E-N dot com. Hey, everyone. I am so stoked to be here with Dave Scott today. Uh, Dave, you are are a household name to me. Um, you know, I, I'm, I've been around long enough that I remember when you were just the man, literally the man of Ironman. So Dave Scott, six-time Ironman world champion, um, absolute OG in the sport and still an endurance legend. Uh, tell me about your life now. Uh, you know, obviously it's been a weird last year, but tell me, tell me what the man is doing. Well, thank you, Johnny, for having me. Uh, you, you've got some gray in your beard, so I, I know you've been around a while <laughs> yourself. So. Exactly. Uh, I'm st still immersed in the sport. I mean, the sort of the endurance spectrum has been my focus, but I've also branched out to the aging, which is a, a good fit for myself, and also nutritional elements, which I've been involved with for a long time. And that's really transcended over the years. You know, I was a carbohydrate machine early on, and that's what I professed and followed the science. And now that's shifted over to low carb, high fat, and keto. Uh, I still have, um, I have a Dave Scott Tri Club, but I'm kind of the flower is broadening on this because I, I want athletes that um, are also coming off of injuries. So I have some injury related programs because I understand biomechanics and, and muscles and ligaments and uh, bones quite well. So that's sort of built in. And I also have um, it, within the Dave Scott Tri Club, I have a forum and, and so people can chat with me. So I'll say it's fairly intimate. Coming up, though, I have three camps uh, in Kona on the really on the Ironman course, and it's at uh, the Four yep. Seasons Resort. So I have one early June and July, and also in December, and and I'll be traveling over there for those, and and hopefully getting on a plane <laughs> in other yeah. occasions too. I've got a camp in France as well, so those are on my website that people can look at. So the world's opening up just in time for those camps, and you mentioned Kona, and uh, I mean that's a name that's pretty much synonymous with you. Um, tell me about the camps in Kona, what they're focused on. Uh, they're five days and I've kept them small from the outset. It started in 2016 and, and the maximum number is eight people. So wow. it's, it's just hands on with me. I, I'm re really particular about uh, technique. And so uh, we videotape people in swim, bike, run. A lot of them aren't all triathletes, but we, we do videotaping on that and analyze their technique and, and then give them the skills and drills so that they can mend some of the issues. Uh, I have a every, every day, which I think people are sort of caught off guard by because they they've sort of dabbled in it. And you look at endurance athletes, and they're really pathetic of a group as far as mobility, flexibility, and strength. And and I've always been a big advocate. Even when I was in high school and I played water polo and swam, I said, "Well, I got to be stronger. I'm not that big of a guy." And I carried into endurance sports. So I've kind of professed that I've coached that and this mobility stretch strength program in the camps is one of the key seeds and key tenets of the camp. People go away, I write up their program so they know exactly the, the exercise, the sets, the reps, the recovery, the sequence, what to look out for, and, and there's video. Of, and they, they just go wild over it because a lot of them have never had any structure. And so that, that's a huge, huge part of it. Um, all the video analysis that, that we do uh, is very specific, but when I have six people in a room or eight people in a room, there's a lot of nuances that are the same. And nutrition is a big, big, big topic, as I just mentioned, Johnny, uh, the whole carbohydrate thing. I, I was recently in there a couple of years ago in Australia, and I had given a clinic over there 25 years ago. Now they're all old people like myself. And they said, Dave, you talked about carbohydrates. Now you're saying eat all this healthy fat and get rid of your carbohydrates. And I said, yeah, sorry, I'm glad you're still around. 
So uh, that nutrition area is a big area, not just for health, aging, but but also performance. So talk about that as well. Uh, interesting to hear uh, not not being an ideologue. You know, the idea that you you believe this and profess it and practiced it, but still followed. Uh, evidence and said, okay, this is the area that um that seems to be working. I'm going to go to that. Um, I, I was also quite interested when you talked about um uh, stability, uh, strength, and stretching, or uh, sort of mobility, strength, and stretching. And you and I talked a little bit um, off camera just before about how that hasn't always been prevalent in the endurance world. You know, the endurance world was about being light and fast, and um and like you said, it it doesn't always age well. <laughs> so um. Yeah, they- so, so tell me how, how you came across that and how you've incorporated that. Uh, I think it's not really coming across it. I mean, I just follow the science on it. And I think a lot of it, as you alluded to, a lot of the endurance athletes just shy away from it. Well, I got a swim, bike, run, therefore I don't have time. And when they do have time, they've got a, a hodgepodge of exercise and they, and they don't adhere to them, particularly during the season. So a, a lot of the athletes, they always claim that I'm the same weight as I was in high school and look at me now. And I look at them as um, skinny fat. In other words, yeah. they, they lose a lot of lean muscle mass. They have the same body weight, but e- even as you drop it and you can negate that decline in the decades, and I know well, cause I'm in my sixties. If, if you let it go in your thirties, you're on a descent. And a lot yeah. of the endurance athletes that just do endurance work all of a sudden have this muscle loss from sarcopenia. And it's really prevalent. And then they also simultaneously, because all the movement patterns that they do are, are kind of in the, that sagittal plane moving forward, they, they lose range of motion. And so, yeah. you know, I go through these exercises I'm talking about Hawaii, but I do them with anywhere and everywhere. I do them here in my hometown with my group, the, the shoulder, the rotator cuff, the thoracic spine, getting extension and rotation, and also the hips. Those are the big three. And it, sort of the application really is almost all sports, but it certainly applies to triathletes. They lose a little bit. And even if you lose, you know, just a few millimeters, all of a sudden you've got this niggling injury. And yeah. everyone that's an endurance athlete has had an injury. And you can offset them by doing the mobility and the stretching uh, and also the strength, but you have to be diligent at it. And it's got to be a, a protocol that makes sense that parallels the competitive or non-competitive seasons and if you don't address it i assume that that injury compounds because suddenly that limited range of motion causes more pain causes you to change the way you do things um and it's too bad that so many of us wait for that injury before we address it you wait for the injury you wait to the injury you can't just push through anymore and by then it's so deep set that the work to get over it is a lot more than it would have been if you'd addressed it in the first place yeah you're you're exactly right i have a, a series of programs which i've sort of mentioned my first one that I'm launching is back to run and the Mm -hmm. back to run program. It's not about running. It's about doing these exercises first before you can think about running. And and a lot of athletes that say, Oh, it feels okay. I'm gonna go out and run 5k. They haven't run for six weeks. And I I said, here you go. You're going to just injure yourself again. So I've got all sorts of uh, stretch cord exercises, body weight exercises, hopping exercises, double leg, single leg on a checkerboard, a lot of wild stuff. And, and also activating the, the the major muscles, not just your, you know, people think of your glutes and your quads, but the smaller ones, you know, you look at a uh, anatomy chart of the, of the glute muscle. Well, there's a lot of muscles that lie in there on both sides, uh, the anterior side, and the posterior side. So I, I, I'm a stickler for that. And, and, uh, you know, as we were talking before we got on, I, I see this across the board. I, you know, the best professionals quite often are just dreadful. They're shockingly bad with those, big three areas they're, they're genetically gifted they're fast and i always look at them and people people always come back to me and they say well they're the world champion and i say well they can be better and what well, and also is, is and also it's going to be a short career they can stay better for longer exactly exactly yeah. so it's that you know it's a fun part of i think people think of endurance sports you know as most people do in the sort of the strength world oh you're just going to go out there and, and exercise all day long and and uh, I always have my athletes do at least three sessions a week. Uh, if they can pare it down to two, they can still reap the benefits. And I know you know this area as far as strength, but I have them do mobility and stretching every day. And I said, just get on the floor. I said, don't sit yeah. on your couch. Don't watch TV. Start moving. And, um, you know, and, I, and I'm fairly uh, precise on what the exercises they should do based on their anatomy and dysfunction. Well, 
Well, and for the everyday athlete who's listening, you know, hopefully we have the occasional uh, super elite athlete who can come down. I, not not that it's only elite athletes come to your camp. I don't want to pigeonhole you, you know, but um, but I, but I mean, you, you know, for for the person who's getting most of their information from listening to or watching a podcast, um, I think you really nailed it about the idea that just move. Period. Um, for, just as a baseline, and then then you build from there. You know, so many people they go to their office job all day, and then they drive the car home, and then they sit on the couch, and then they work out for half an hour and say, "I worked out," but there was. 10 times more sedentary time there. And um, I remember years ago, um, I, I was telling Joe that I had a, I ended a relationship and had no furniture. And he said, perfect, don't, <laughs> don't get any. <laughs> exactly. You're on the right path, no furniture. And uh, so, but there, there's something to be said for that, right? Yes, there is. Yeah. <laughs> have floor space everywhere so you can yeah. you know, get on the floor and move about and, you know, and you have just so, some si- simple tools as well. So getting back to that hierarchy, you know, you've got the person who's going to uh, go and get professional coaching. They're going to come to your camp and they're going to really learn everything. The next level is somebody who's going to go um, to your website or a similar website, you know, follow something where they're going to get a, a ton of information. But to, to bring people in at a ground level, so so you're watching this, you, you're, you're buying into Dave's idea that, man, I really do need to focus on some mobility and some uh, and some um, strength. What What's you know, other than just moving, like what are some basic things that you would say, start with this? Well, those, those three areas that I mentioned, the, the shoulders, the rotator cuff and the mid, mid back, uh, mm-hmm. generally compensate. You look at the thoracic spine, uh, a lot of people have neck pain and their upper traps and their, their veda, uh, levator, you know, below their ears, they get tight and they sit in the desk and they're yeah. internally rotating, their pecs get tight and they, you know, they say, gee, my neck really hurts. And so your cervical spine takes it up. And then a lot of times your low back hurts. So your lumbar spine takes it up and really you want the middle part of your back to start to start moving. Uh, during uh, COVID, Johnny, I, I just shot these real rudimentary videos that, you know, people can do with a stretch cord. Some are not with stretch cords. You have a yoga mat and just lie down on it as we, you know, on your living room rug. And uh, some very simplistic ones where you take a stretch cord and one beautiful exercise that I like, and I can just describe it to the, to the listeners. It's very, very simple. And you can move this into lots of different permutations. If you anchor the stretch cord, let's say you have it to a tree, which I did my, yeah. my yard uh, or a fence, whatever works. And then rather than pulling on the stretch cord, you're going to turn around and back face it. So you have the stretch cord handles at your, at your hips, your arms are fully extended and you're just doing, and you have to be careful doing this because if you, if you have too much load, you get this anterior glide in your humerus. And, and so you, you just make like a snow angel. So if you're familiar with the snow, it's just yeah. an overarm reach. So you're, you're, you're uh, flexing your, your shoulder. I mean, you're extending your arms with shoulder flexion. So your arm goes overhead and you're reaching up as high as you can. And a lot of people, all ages will find, because as you just alluded to, they're, they're sitting at a desk, they can't reach up with a straight arm. They cannot do yeah. it. They can do it if they arch their back. They can do it if they hyperextend their neck, but they just can't reach straight up. So this one, you have tension. So you get a concentric load, and then you also have an eccentric load where the muscle is lengthening, going in both different directions. It's such a simple exercise, but I have a lot of people warm up with that. And then you can also take that, your back facing, let's say you have both arms over your head, you can cross one foot behind the other one and just do a lateral side bend. And with the yep. side bend with the stretch cord, it, you know, it, it feels fantastic. And you're stretching all the way down to your hip flexors that, uh, you know, for the, for the listeners, if you're sitting, at, sitting down listening to this and you just have your feet on the ground, you lift one knee up and put your uh, thumb right at your, your joint line of your quad and your crotch, you'll feel that magnificent tensor fascia latte. It's a, kind of a yeah. real ropey muscle. Well, that thing gets tight when you sit. So when you're doing that sort of side bend, you can also squeeze your glute and do that side bend. And it, I mean, it feels fantastic. And you stretch it in your lats and, and your whole rotator. I mean, that's a very simple example, but I, I have that, um, on my YouTube channel, it's one of the exercises. I, I've shown it many different times and people, you know, kind of sort of rave about it. You know, never thought of that one. I said, well, put it in your repertoire. It's an easy one. Oh, absolutely. And we talked before about the idea that some of the best in the world who haven't employed this and, you know, they're having a great career, but it's going to be cut short. Um, the other uh, demographic is the person who's maybe coming to triathlon later in life. 
uh, you know, that they, they weren't the elite athlete uh, in their teens and 20s, but uh, as they're finding more time with their kids growing in at 40, they're taking it up. And I know that uh, Ironman um, really mastered the age group uh, categories to, to encourage that, which is awesome. Um, but in terms of somebody who's just coming into the sport and maybe hasn't put that wear and tear on yet, um, it's even more important, I think, for them because they, they don't have that benefit of the, uh, the invincibility of youth. You know, they're going to find out real quick uh, the limitations if they don't incorporate these from day one. Yeah, like, exactly. And the people that come to my camps, th these are just age groupers. Uh, the range that I've had is 29 years up to 76. And I've had yep. multiple Ironman com uh, competitors and others that have never done a race before. Uh, I had a group of, of Japanese dentists that came to Four Seasons and, and they, they weren't really seasoned. They were seasoned in their profession and cleaning teeth and, and above and beyond <laughs> that. But, you know, as far as triathlon, they, they weren't. So I, you know, when I, when I get, get these people and I, and I'm, you know, working with these athletes and, and the professional athletes or the 45 year old or 50 year old, who's now come out of hibernation for, for 30 years, I always tell them that less is generally better and start with those three things we've talked about, mobility, stretching, and strength as part of your routine, because you're going to offset the long-term potential injuries that you have. There's really a um, sort of a dichotomy and it's, and it's partly not mainstream information right now, but for a lot of the athletes that just keep going long, long distance, long distance, long distance. Yeah. And the weekend comes around, they want to ride their bike five hours and they, they want to do, do a bike run and a swim on Sunday and they do this for eternity. It really affects that uh, energy organelle, that mitochondria. And so it, it looks like someone's taking a hammer to it it's, and it becomes dysfunctional. Uh, the number around the muscle cell becomes dysfunctional. And I always tell them, you do strength training, and you knock out those carbohydrates, which simultaneously they work together, your mitochondria flourish. So if they're doing high intensity training, uh, doing strength stuff, and they're doing high intensity interval training on swim, bike, run, it's really magic for their whole physiology and, and preventing injuries. You know, that's actually a perfect segue to um, uh, take a break because I, I want to have a longer conversation with you about strength and about diet, because like you say, those are two things that are going to really tie together. We've uh, done a good job covering uh, mobility and the importance of that for, uh, for, and I, I also appreciate that, you know, even though triathlon is uh, your claim to fame, that you're approaching this from a, a holistic endurance standpoint, that this is uh, runners, climbers, um, cyclists, swimmers, triathletes, whatever it is. Um, so, hey, Dave, thanks so much for taking this time to talk to us about mobility. And uh, anyone who uh, is watching this, uh, stay tuned because we're going to be coming up with another episode soon where we come back with Dave and talk more about strength and about diet. Hey, to dive deeper into what Dave and I spoke about today and lots more, go to DaveScottIncorporated.com. You'll find out all about Dave, his career, and his coaching. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by the Exogen Ultrasound Bone Healing System. If you or a loved one has a broken bone, talk to your doctor about Exogen. Exogen is indicated for the healing of non-union fractures and for accelerating the healing of certain acute fractures with no contraindications. To learn more, visit exogen.com, E-X-O-G-E-N.com. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Endurance Series on Spartan Up Podcast. Spartan Up is your partner in resilience for mind, body, and spirit. We're here three days every week. Tuesdays, you can find Joe DeSena, founder and CEO of Spartan, interviewing biohackers, business leaders, authors, and athletes. Thursdays and Saturdays, catch episodes from our DECA, Endurance, Trail, Combat, and La Ruta series. Do you know someone who needs a little nudge? Maybe they could use some motivation, tactics to be stronger, healthier, happier, more successful. Tell them about our show. And if you're watching on YouTube, leave us a comment. We want to know who's watching and who's listening. Thanks. See you next time.